Welcome to Squadron Scale Workshop. My name is Brett Green. The Supermarine Spitfire must be one of the most popular subjects for model companies in the history of plastic sprues. Tamiya had a crack in 148 scale themselves with their 1993 uh, Spitfire Mark I. That was a really nice kit for its time, uh, fast and easy to build, good fit, but there were some well-known issues with shape and dimensions that are often discussed and are pretty well documented today. Tamiya has now reached back into their back catalogue and revisited the Spitfire Mark I with a brand new 148 scale kit. Now this has nothing in common whatsoever with the 25 year old 1993 release. It comprises 111 parts in grey plastic. There are a further 11 parts in clear. Uh, there is a nickel plated photo etched fret that includes parts uh, such as uh, harness straps and smaller details. There are self adhesive canopy masks. These are the style where the, uh, the pattern is printed onto the kabuki style uh, self adhesive material and you cut them out with a scalpel yourself. But there's also another set of self-adhesive uh, pieces that, that are actually intended to be panels on the, uh, on the aircraft. Quite an innovative approach, and we'll take a look at those in a bit more detail later. The kit may be built as a fairly early production Mark I or a later production Mark I. Uh, it comes with uh, the de Havilland three-bladed propeller, so you can't actually build it as an initial production uh, machine, but all you would really need is to find a 148 scale uh, two-bladed Watts uh, wooden propeller to substitute for the de Havilland um, metal propeller supply in the kit. However, there are most of the other options that you'll need for many of the differences between an early production and a late production Spitfire provided on the sprues and they include uh, right down to the level of optional parts in the cockpit for, uh, for trim wheels and uh, controls uh, different between the, the two sub-variants. Also the windscreen is, uh, is different for the early machines and the later machines, the armoured and the non-armoured uh, windscreen. The antenna masts, so the early antenna masts, the taller and, and skinny one, uh, is supplied as well as the more conventional uh, one that we're used to. And there are two styles of pitot tube uh, for beneath the wing that uh, are offered as well. So to me has really been paying attention with the detailed differences between the earlier production and the later production Spitfire and given the model a, a quite a good range of choice uh, within this box. The parts breakdown is mostly conventional. There's a full span lower wing uh, there are two separate halves for the upper wings. We have fuselage halves and, and so forth. But there are a couple of innovations and the first one that will hit you when you open the box are the large inserts on the mid upper uh, fuselage on both sides. The reason that Tamiya has done this is that they've given you two different styles of insert depending on whether you want to pose the canopy slid back and the pilot's entry door open or whether you want to pose the entry door closed and uh, the canopy slid shut. And these inserts really are pretty much the only way you can do it without having some sort of compromise with either a high riding canopy uh, or, uh, or some sort of uh, underscale uh, part of the fuselage. Quite clever really. The other clever piece of engineering involved here is the main undercarriage. So each of the main undercarriage legs are connected um, in the middle, so it's one piece for both legs with a plastic bridge. And what that means is that it's going to be virtually idiot proof and even possibly my own self idiot proof uh, is in as far as getting the correct splay and rake of the sometimes tricky uh, Spitfire undercarriage. Well, I should probably stop talking about the kit now and actually uh, let you see what's uh, on the sprues. So uh, let's take a look right now.
The sprues that we'll be examining are a production kit. This is exactly the same as the kit that you'll see in the shops. There are three marking options. Two of them are later machines, and one is an earlier Spitfire Mark I. The first thing that you'll probably notice when you're looking at the kit is the large gap in the top of the fuselage halves. These are provided for one of two optional inserts on the upper mid fuselage. This is the starboard insert for when the canopy is closed. This is the optional part for when the canopy is slid open. Note the horizontal and vertical rebate just behind the cockpit. Fuselage interior sidewall detail. Here is the port side for the open cockpit option. You'll also note that the pilot's boarding door is also open if you take up this option. Here is the port side buttoned up option. Check out the lovely sidewall detail on the inside of the closed option part. Equally nice on the other side. Surface textures comprise both raised and recessed detail and they look just as good as you would expect from any 2018 Tamiya kit. Here are those clever joined main undercarriage legs. Nice detail on the wheel well interior sidewalls. Beautiful crisp panel line detail on the full span lower wing. It's equally nice on the upper wing. The recessed panel lines really need to be viewed nice and close to appreciate how good they really are. The three bladed de Havilland propeller. With the spinner and the back plate. The underwing radiator intake is a multi-part assembly. Rib tape detail on the fabric ailerons is nicely done. The early style exhausts. Elevators are moulded fixed with the upper horizontal stabilisers. Note the separate wingtips which might suggest that we're going to be getting a Mark V at some stage in the future. The upper halves of the horizontal stabilizers are molded as a single part. Tamiya offers us the choice of a pilot's entry door with or without a pinch bar. Just don't paint it red. Main wheels and other detail parts. A nicely molded pilot is included with a separate head. cockpit parts, markings are supplied for three aircraft. The self-adhesive canopy masks. Tamiya calls these moulding stickers. They're self-adhesive uh, sections that are used for raised panels and also for the oval shaped uh, vent on the siding canopy. The clear parts. The separate parts for the open and closed canopies. 
This is the base part for the armoured windscreen. Two styles of armour plate are included. The nickel plated photo etch fret. So there you have it. It's to me is brand new 148 scale Spitfire Mark 1. As uh, many have argued previously with the release of the Tamiya ME262, the Tamiya P47 Thunderbolt uh, and, and many others, uh, the question will be raised, do we really need another Mark I Spitfire in 148 scale? I've got to say, looking through the contents of the box, the answer once again is a resounding yes. <laughs> Uh, I've put everything else to one side and I'll be building this kit pretty much straight away. You'll see an unaccustomed white space here and that is specifically uh, to make room for, uh, for building this Spitfire Mark I. Uh, I'm looking forward to reporting back with some observations uh, about how it goes together but uh, I don't think you'd need to be Nostradamus to uh, guess what I'll be saying. Well that's about all we have for you on Squadron Scale Workshop tonight. Until next time, bye for now.